Cool, looks like we are online again. Let's see if I can actually keep track of what I am actually broadcasting out to everyone this time. Because I stuffed that up last week and uh, had no idea what people could see and ended up just showing the wrong thing. Uh, but, you know, that's all heart part of the fun. Uh, today we're going to be kind of picking up where we left off with last week's where uh, we were playing around with um, a static web application I was building using Create React app with a GraphQL backend uh, and then um, doing a bit of stuff uh, to build that out and uh, one of the questions that kept coming up was around how you improve the use of TypeScript with GraphQL so that's what I want to look at today. Uh, we'll wait a few minutes while people join in and stuff like that, and then we'll kick off, um, yeah, essentially picking up where we left off last week. Hopefully it'll be easy enough. Um, this time I haven't actually tried the demo app bef uh, before coming on, but you know, we'll, we'll see what happens when we try and build out the stuff today. Can't go too wrong, I'm sure. Uh, I suppose while we're waiting, let's open up in size code, get everything up and running. Oh, wrong screen. There we go. Whoa. Check it out. There we go. Correct screen. And actually, I'm going to. Kill that, the terminal, uh, let's go, create a new branch for this, GraphQL types, cool, there we go, uh, let's have, uh, uh, that way we don't stuff up anything that's actually on the master branch, while I might be the only one that's actually deving on this, it's better not to just push stuff straight through to master. Um, yeah, <laughs> a little bit of uh, safety, I think, is probably a good idea. Uh, and then I'm going to need another terminal so we can run the functions. Uh, there it is. Cool. API. And we'll kick an npm start there. And npm start over here. Sweet. All starting up. Wait for the compilers to all kick in. Wow, I've got another laptop just on the desk next to me, and the fan on that one is going nuts. All it's doing is it's literally just um, showing me the Twitch stream so I can see what everyone's seeing. So, I, like, if I do sw scene switching, I don't stuff up anything. But wow, is that, uh, is that going crazy or what? Excellent. Application is up and running. Now, uh, so the, just to, I guess, a quick recap of where we were at. So we got this um, GraphQL schema, which has um, the like the, the game state and the questions and players, etc., etc., all defined in it. And then we created a types.ts file here, and inside of that was essentially what we had in. The, um, the GraphQL schema thing, so that you know, we were able to to kind of use the types within inside of our TypeScript application, particularly in the resolvers, and just be like, yeah, you know, this is what we're expecting back um, uh, from everything. So that you know, we, we had that basic level of, of type safety, but it, we didn't have it, like it wasn't super strongly typed. Like if we stuffed up the way we wrote our types and they weren't matching what was in the schema, then things were gonna be stuffed up. And we actually did that um, last week. I actually had one of the properties, I uh, think it was a question property wrong and yeah, it just didn't work. Um, hey, welcome to the, the stream today. Uh, good to have you on joining us. Um, yeah, just doing a bit of a, a recap of, of what the code base was at. 
Um, but yeah, so like here's the game, and yeah, you know, like I said, I think we had a a, um, a a type property that was incorrect somewhere, and it wasn't until I actually tried to play through the game and found out I was getting no results back that I came and was like, ah, oh, well that was frustrating. So um, yeah, let's look at how we can improve the type safety of that. And I'm going to be using a tool that I've come across when doing TypeScript and um, GraphQL called GraphQL Code Generator. Uh, it's a command line tool um, that allows you to take a GraphQL schema and generate TypeScript definitions from it. Now, I will do a shout out um, to uh, some of the folks I know over at ThinkMill are actually building a tool kind of on top of um, GraphQL Code Gen uh, called TSGQL. Um, so what it does is it takes the GraphQL queries that you're finding, so like, uh, like we've got here, uh, and then uses that to infer the TypeScript definitions for it. Now we kind of, so we sort of do that with inside of our application. Like we, we have to, to use um, a GQL. We're using it from um, GraphQL tag as a package. And you'll see that I've got a query written in here, but that's just plain old JavaScript then. And I've got to pass it across the appropriate um, handler. So in this case, um, we're using the use query hook from Apollo hooks. Um, yeah, it looks like the, the one from ThinkMill is still a bit in preview. Um, and it's, uh, I, I, I'm not going to go into it or, or play with it because I haven't had a chance to play with it yet. And B, I'm still trying to work out precisely where it would fit in the sorts of um, structures that I do. Um, a question um, from She Hulk, she, uh, no, says Hulk. We'll find out how we pronounce that at some point uh, about the, the terminal. Uh, I've got so, um, so this is WSL2, um, Ubuntu specifically, and I am running um, Tmux as a terminal multiplexer over the top of it. So that's how I do like split terminals and things like that. Um, uh, which side am I on? I'm on the left hand side. I can do, uh, I've got commands that like launch out uh, to browser windows and stuff like that. Um, and I then, so whenever I open up WSL2, it automatically drops me into a TMUX session uh, with ZSH as the shell. And then I've got um, some customizations over the top of that. So I, uh, eventually it's going to tick in. Yeah, there's my IP addresses for internal and external. Um, I've got the date and time information and stuff like that. Um, I've got a blog post up on my website uh, that kind of talks through all of that. If we go there. Um, Oh, I don't even know what it's tagged. It's in here somewhere. Uh, yeah, so this is probably the one that we want. I'll check it in chat. Um, but I, I do a bit of, I've got a couple of videos where I walk through the terminals and how I use VS Code and stuff like that. And it links off to a previous blog post which has all the scripts um, in there. Yeah. So uh, that's the, the blog post um, that I've written uh, about it. So yeah, if you want to, Check that out. Cool beans. Um, all right, so let's go back to, to GraphQL code gen. And I'm going to come back into our schema. Let's just have a look. What, let's play with it in the browser. Paste it in there um, and see what. Ex excellent, it has gone and generated stuff. So there's a whole bunch of different ways that it can generate. Um, Thing. So it can generate uh, front end stuff, it can generate back end stuff, um, it can generate both obviously, uh, it can do operations, it can uh, integrate with uh, some of the third party um, components, so like Apollo with hooks or Vue or Angular, um, URQL, uh, a bunch of other things like that. Um, it can even generate, so this is not just for TypeScript, um, I've only ever used it for TypeScript. But you can also do um, .NET generation, Java generation, Flow, um, and stuff like that. So it, it's it's a really powerful tool if you're doing GraphQL and you want to like work with a bunch of different languages. So let's have a look at you know, what's it look like from a C sharp perspective. Oh, it's put regions in. There's a there's a trigger for me putting in a region in a like in .NET code. No thanks. Um, but yeah, like this is generating. Yeah, just a some classes and stuff like that. Cool. Um, but we'll come back to, okay, uh, we'll come back to the, the schema. So yeah, this is what we're generating and that's kind of actually what we need for our resolvers, yeah? Um, and if we have a look, here we go. Uh, so for like a JavaScript backend, I can get resolvers. Um, so it can generate me like the, yeah, there's that, so query here. 
would ah it's uh it keeps replacing <laughs> this uh schema over on the side so let's update that um and if we scroll down to the bottom we might have resolver hey here we go uh ah, cool so query has game and games which yep and um, so then yeah that um, that looks like it'll probably be fairly useful when it comes to um, what we want to import. But also notice it has the Apollo React hooks. Um, that's all changed as well. So here's like a query that we might be doing from the front end, um, find users. Sweet. Um, I have to obviously update the query. So let's just, let's just use their default one. So we would have a find users query. So that's like what you would call in the front end. Um, and then this is gonna, if we scroll down, there's the find users query as a type. There's the fragment. So like if you're, if what you're returning is not like the full original type, um, but using a fragment, which is where you can kind of like pick the subfields of a um, type that you wanna return. Um, so that's generated as a type and how that works, cool. And then here is our hook. So hopefully that's a lot more strongly typed. Now, let's go ahead and start installing this. Uh, we'll split that terminal. And we'll come into here and then to the API. So we're gonna install these packages into the API project, not into the, the root project because um, I, I, the API is where the GraphQL stuff lives. Um, so it makes the first logical sense to install there. And I've already opened up the install guide. I've already got GraphQL installed. We want uh, install as a dev dependency GraphQL dash cogen slash CLI. So we'll paste that in. Remove the dollars at the start and we'll get going. Uh, do, 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 do. There's nothing like watching NPM dependencies install. That'll take a moment or two, I'm sure. Um, now, one thing that I don't particularly like um, in the previous times I've used the GraphQL um, code gen is that uh, there's two ways that you can do the configuration for it. Um, well, look at there's Azure Functions going nuts as uh, all these dependencies pop in. Um, so by default, it looks for a YAML file uh, called codegen.yaml, um, which we can see here in the browser. Um, I personally really don't like YAML. Uh, I just I, I don't I, I find it's an overly tedious um, like uh, language, I guess, um, like config format to work with. Um, so I, I prefer not to use it. Um, GraphQL, uh, so this tool does also support JSON, but the JSON is actually even worse to work with because um, I just the, like the way that you have to define everything in the JSON, it just doesn't work. So we're gonna use the YAML approach um, despite my you know, objections towards YAML. Okay, what did it say next in install? Is we go npx codegen init. So let's run that. Uh, so this is going to be an API. Yep. So it's going to be an API. Cool. Uh, oh, wait. Toggle that one on. Read the instructions. Uh, where is the schema? So so you can put it into an existing schema. So like if you're doing a client application, you might point it to an existing GraphQL schema. If it's a server application, you can probably put the path to where the um, GraphQL schema is, which is what I'm going to do. Uh, it is in GraphQL slash schema dot GraphQL. So we'll do uh, graphql slash schema dot graphql. Cool. Uh, so I want TypeScript with, okay, so it's auto selected for me. It must have detected um, the TypeScript. I'm gonna hope that it detected and that's why it's selected. Um, but yeah, we want TypeScript and TypeScript resolver. So that'll make our resolver stuff a lot easier to work with. So yes, I like those. Uh, where do we want to output it to? Yeah, we'll put it to generated GraphQL. That seems decent enough. Um, we don't want to generate an introspection file. So this can be useful for like um, exposing out I guess, schema information and stuff like that. Um, but it's just a generation stuff that we don't need. Uh, we'll do that with the config. Uh, 
what script, what will we call it? We'll call it gen. Uh, okay, that's done. Uh, okay, so npm install. So uh, it's added a bunch of dependencies. So we'll kick off a new install and let's have a look at what's happened. So inside of our dependencies, we now have GraphQL CodeGen CLI up here at uh, 115.3 and then GraphQL CodeGen TypeScript and TypeScript resolvers. So that will just do the general TypeScript generation and then the resolvers will um, help us write our resolver stuff with inside of resolvers.ts to hand over to Apollo. Uh, we then have our codegen.yaml, uh, which yeah, overwrite. So every time we run the code gen, it's just going to replace um, what was previously there. Uh, documents. Now, so um, documents is useful if you're wanting to split out your schema into multiple smaller files um, and not just have like one enormous schema that represents everything. Uh, and then, um, then we've got the generate node and then inside of that is the output file. And what's kind of cool about the way this works is that if I wanted to output multiple files from this one schema or this one generation run, I can just literally clone this uh, out and then I can make multiple copies of it and then obviously put different paths and then it should all just work. Uh, GraphQL 2. Cool, there we go. So we'll get rid of that because uh, we only really need one of these anyway. Uh, all that's installed, so we then do npm run gen. So run the generation tool. Excellent, so it's parsed the config and generated outputs. Let's have a look at this output that it's generated. Ah, whoops, I probably didn't want to put it in source. I should have paid attention to what I was doing. Uh, so we'll just go to generated.graphql, yeah. Oh, do we want to go, uh, let's go graphql slash generated. Yeah, we'll put it, we'll nest it under the, that folder. Uh, and then we'll run gen again. Like this original folder. Uh, delete permanently. Did I get it? Delete permanently. Ah, there we go. All right, so here is our new generated types. And they look big and complex and I'm just gonna format them with prettier make it a little bit easier to read uh, or not that you know like this thing here on line three to five uh, three to six is particularly easy to read um, like that's a lot of generics with extended generics and like, if you've not done a whole lot of stuff with TypeScript that is going to look confusing as heck because uh, yeah so this is basically it's um, required field is the type and it then has two generic arguments the one of them has keys that are of the type. Um, yeah, okay, that, that one's quite confusing. Um, but let's have a look at one of the ones that might be a lot easier to understand. Let's take answer. And we're gonna just split that side by side so that we can have a look at that in, like, in comparison with the original schema that we worked with. So answer, um, so it has this uh, double underscore type name. That's just kind of metadata on the generated type. And then answer had two properties, a string and a question string and a question and then question we could like click down we end up here and that's where the question is you'll notice that it's it's scala uh, so it's scalar um and then like id or string and stuff like that rather than just like direct string um and that's because you can create your own types within typescript uh, within um uh, graphql and uh, so if i had my own custom type which uh, id um is it's a built-in type, but it's still a custom type that TypeScript wouldn't understand. So they're all just inside of this um, this box here of the uh, of what it is. But yeah, cool. All right, um, let's just let's let's go all out and let's come into our resolvers. Uh, we're gonna pop that one into this tab. Whoa, no, I didn't want it in a new tab at the top. And anyway, I had it already open. Instead of doing that, we're gonna go from types, we're going to generated slash GraphQL. Save that. Ooh, only a couple of red squigglies. So game state waiting for players, does it not exist? Ah, it's obviously detected pluralization and then depluralized it. Interesting. Um, 
I wonder, I wonder if that's something that you could control or was that actually what I had it in in the schema and I've just had that wrong. It is what I had in it. So there's like, there's the first catch of the day. Um, like the game state is waiting for player, not waiting for players. And so I've had that wrong the whole time in my type system. I, what I'm actually, that um, it has obviously hasn't burnt me yet, but that's something that I'd never considered. I, I just had it completely wrong. And I didn't know because the types that I'd written didn't match my schema. Um, and yeah, cool. Um, I'm actually going to go back to waiting for players because it's meant to be intended as a multiplayer game. So I'm going to just update that to waiting for players and we'll regenerate so that we get our updated um, TypeScript file, uh, TypeScript generated file here. Um, that should be done because we've got, yep, there we go. We've got overwrite turned on, waiting for players. Fantastic. Fixed. Go back to resolvers and all these errors have gone away. And like, if I then went and delete types.ts, let's go back and see what's, like, has anything failed? Maybe not. Well, that's kind of, that's a lot easier than I expected. <laughs> um, I should have just done that last week. Would have made, made my life easier. Uh, <laughs> uh, fun. Um, no, I, I do actually know, I have a, we'll have an error in this file because that doesn't exist anymore. So we go generated slash GraphQL. Save that. So that'll regenerate the web application. Yeah. Okay. So wow, we like we we fi fixed an error that we had in schema versus implementation. Um, like that's a that's a good quick win. Now another thing that I kept running kind of into um, an issue with was like the the return types of these like you know, player results. Like we don't we didn't know what the first argument is. We didn't know what the return type was. So we had to do a lot of explicit typing. Uh, and that's where the other thing that we've done with um, the code gen, doing this TypeScript resolvers is actually quite useful for us. So we come back to resolvers and we're going to import, um, let's have a look at what are we going to import. We're going to import query and where is that used? We want, yeah, we want query and then the mutation should be here somewhere. Uh, do, 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 do. Resolvers, game resolvers, answer resolvers. I think that's all the stuff that's in there. Yeah, we want a query resolver and then a query mutation. I think that's the stuff that we want to put in there. Let's have a look at uh, one that I've done in the past because that one is, yeah, it's inheriting from, yeah, that's. So this like this I resolvers is just like, it's a generic thing. It doesn't kind of know anything about um, like the 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 types that are around um, and like the like the query type is supposed to be and things like that. So what I could do is do query resolver. Oh wait, no, uh, call it query. That's what it is. And then we're going to import uh, query resolvers. Is it, it's query resolvers. Do, 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 do. Yep. Um, uh. No. No, no, no. We'll, we'll do this differently. We'll do um, type resolvers uh, extends. Yeah, extends. I extends. Yeah, extends. I resolver. I resolve those. There we go. Uh, no, no, it's not a type. It's an interface because we're just going to do it here. We're not creating a class or anything like that. Oh, we could create it, but no, I'm not going to. Uh, query is going to be a query resolvers, and we're going to have mutation, mutation resolvers. There we go. And I don't think I got anything else. In there, no, probably not. So then I can change this to be resolvers, not um, I resolvers. And now if we hover over query, so it's got the that properly, and if we hover over game, now we'll see that the type 
definition here has actually highlight stuff has changed a little bit. So we see this now of resolver, type resolver wrapper, um, and then uh, a whole bunch of different arguments. So if we now if we have a look over our underscore, like that's just the ignored um, initial argument, we have a look at the second argument. And if we go and just change that to args, we can see that this is a required fields um, game R, query game args and it's going to have a property of ID on that. So let's just go back to here. And what we get is now we get some proper IntelliSense. Um, so the, the type completion is like, okay, cool. So you want an ID there? We can give you an ID. Uh, and now I can also remove this because game knows what it needs to return. So I don't need to do any explicit typing. That knows it's going to return an array. That knows it's going to return an array. This knows that it's a promise. So I don't need to put that there. Get rid of player. And then what else do we have? Got to get rid of game. Um, that one's not typed anyway. So yeah, I, so, so now we get type safety off all of these. Because if I, and I can click through on that too. Here's the, like, uh, let's just, Oops, close, uh, close off the little thing on the side. So yeah, that, like you can see there, um, there's the type of the mutation resolver and it's like a start game as the resolver, that's the arguments that come in. Uh, and then, yeah, uh, that's the, like the return type. And like I said, these, these types are quite complex. Um, that's understandably confusing to look at, but it's, it, it's like writing with those at the start makes things so much easier. Because if I was to remove one of these, let's just remove submit answer, um, we'll, uh, we would have a compilation error because we're missing um, one of the mutations that are on there. Um, uh, or at least we, we, we would get a warning because the mutations are all, and the queries are all defined as, uh, as optional. So that's what the uh, question mark here is on the site. Uh, all right. So we've updated the game resolvers, easy enough. Um, but let's then have a look at how we can improve the way that we work with it in the web application side of things. Because right now, um, we're having to um, like just make sure that we write this query appropriately and then um, pass it in to the, uh, just to a generic hook, like use query or use mutation if we're doing a mutation. But, one of the, but because we are defining this as a tag, what I could do uh, is come over to my schema here and we're going to pop it in just here at the bottom. So that I, it's perfectly valid to put your, um, like your queries and mutations and, um, like in the file like this, or like if you wanted to have separate files and that works, um, well, like the, the, that's what we have in this, uh, this operations. Actually, let's maybe put that into a separate file. Do we want to? Just thinking, do we want that? Yeah, yeah, let's put that as a separate file. We'll call it operations and put this open. <clears throat> yeah, we'll put it side by side of our schema. Now, and this is where it might seem odd uh, because we're putting operations, operations dot GraphQL. Um, so these are operations that are now kind of living with inside of the API. Like that's where that file's residing. So that might be like conceptually a little bit unusual, but you know, still it's it's a way that we could be going about it. And then in our code gen, we're going to just kind of grab this stuff here um, and then pop a new node. Now that needs to be indented properly. We're not going to call it types with hooks. We're going to go dot dot slash. So we're going to go up a level to the API project. We're going to go to source slash GraphQL operations dot TSX. So we'll output that there. Um, we don't want to, uh, so, uh, and then with the config, we're going to say with hooks, 
um, disable uh, not traditional React components uh, and higher order components. So this, you know, if you don't want to use hooks, you can use this um, with a couple of different ways. And we're going to need to install a few new NPM modules. So those are going to be all at GraphQL code gen prefixed. So if we come back here, go npm i-d, so that's shorthand for install as dev dependencies, graphql dash, oh, what was it? Code gen, yeah, code gen slash, we're gonna need type operation, TypeScript operations, yep. And, and TypeScript React Apollo. And at graphql code gen slash, paste, enter, run, so that'll install those new dependencies. Give that a moment and then uh, we can run the generation again and then it should output a new file up into our web component. npm run gen to generate that. Alrighty. Now, cool, I got that location correct. And we'll see here that, so it's got the full schema in there, um, and that's just because the, the, the output of the code gen will always in, include the full schema. Um, you can do some tweaks to like to point to where reference types pre, uh, would already exist and things like that, but I'm not gonna go into too overly advanced usage. And then um, I realized that it didn't actually output what I was hoping for. Let's have a look here. Yeah, config, operations. I don't think it found out, ah, no, it didn't find our operations file because I didn't tell it where to look. And so what we're gonna do is, we'll do in dot slash star dot graphql. So in the current location, we'll look for additional GraphQL files and they're kind of the additional metadata files um, for it. And fantastic, that has not worked. So we need to now have a look at, uh, unable to find any GraphQL, oh no, because it is, where is it? Ah, oh, it's, it's at the same level of um, the, that, 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 that. So what I wanna do, maybe we'll put it into a new folder, we'll call new folder operations, and then we'll pop that up there, and Yep, we'll move that file, oops, into the wrong location, to operations, and then I'm gonna rename this one, what was these operations? That is player, we'll call that player operations. No, uh, rename end game. Yeah, yeah, we'll call that, so that's the, these are the operations you would call to, like, when the game has ended. Yeah, that'll make sense, ish. Uh, operations slash start on GraphQL. Okay, let's try running it again. And, oh great, more errors. Uh, that's because it is in GraphQL slash operations. Now this is what you come to watch, is someone generating, uh, uh, someone like failing to do things correctly. <laughs> All right, there we go, that looks a bit better. The file has a big chunk down here at the bottom, which are Apollo hook stuff. Yeah, let's just format so that we can fit it all on one screen. Yay, look at that, use player result query. So we can now come to complete game, we'll delete that, and we will do import from uh, dot slash, Oh no, we're gonna go up level two GraphQL operations. And we want, what do we want from here? We want use player results query. Yeah. And then we will delete the, yeah, we'll delete that. We'll do const, because we're not quite sure what we have, equals use player results query. And we now have types. I should have I shouldn't have deleted the code. I can't remember what I <laughs> passed in. Ah, variables of game ID and player ID. Okay, so we'll do const uh, just score because we'll ignore whatever comes back at the minute, so we can have a look at it. Use player results query, 
And then, so the first argument is going to be um, operations, which will have variables, variables. And on the variables, we will have a game ID, which will be ID, and then we'll have player ID. Cool, format that. Okay, now underscore has a result. What's the result? It's a player, it's a query result. So if we go, what can we decompose out of that? Uh, we get loading and data which we had up here. So now we'll delete that. Cool. So data might not be, uh, might be undefined, which we should be capturing there if data is not undefined. Uh, and there isn't data. So if it's, ah, uh, no, we'll do or, or there isn't data. Okay, cool. So that, that, deals with that trap. Let's just get rid of the typing there. I don't think we're gonna need it. Cool, because so player data, player results, and then the result has the fields that we expect. Correct answer, uh, correct question, answer, correct answer, and submitted answer. This then cascades down, so we get all of our types for that. And I can now get rid of that. I now don't have to have the query written in line in the file. I've got it um, elsewhere. I can then get rid of GraphQL tag. And we've managed to kind of simplify up this file. So then, like, because that way then we can have this um, query be used in multiple different locations. Because um, we, we've just defined this as a, as a generic query somewhere in a, like a GQL file. Um, and then that just works, like for, <laughs> for a vague definition of just works. Um, and then we could like extract this out and do the same pattern with um, with pretty much anything. So let's go uh, let's go with one of our complex ones because um, I had I've got one in here that does multiple operations in a single thing, but I can't remember which file it was. Uh, I think it was I thought it was join game. No, maybe maybe play game. Um, get game and submit answer. Hmm. No. I don't have any other pages that I've forgotten about. No, it doesn't look like it. Um, oh, maybe I undid that code. Okay, so let's just start with um, the create game mutation. So we'll create a new operation. Uh, we we'll go new file, we'll call that game.graphql. Paste that in here. Format. Um, create game. So we give that mutation a name so it's traceable. Uh, I didn't realize I hadn't done that previously. And uh, we will regen. So what happens? We've generated some outputs, fantastic. Uh, let's over in this file, we'll open up the operations. Let's right out of the bottom. Ah, it's getting a bit annoying that I have to reformat that every time. Cool. So there, like, there's our. Um, so this is actually kind of uh, good to know is that it does generate you just the um, like the tag mutation string or the the tag query string will be up uh, will be somewhere I'm assuming. Uh, like, so if you if you do want to use that and you don't want to use the um, uh, the uh, like the generated um, uh, what's it called generated hook yeah you can you can do that so it, it's there it's available as well which is kind of cool. Um, so we've got now our use uh, use create game mutation existing at the bottom. We'll come back to here. Uh, we will delete that because we don't need it. Uh, but we will just so I can see what fields I need back. We'll go actually. Now we we'll use create game mutation. We're not passing anything to this because this doesn't actually take any parameters. Get rid of that. Delete those two. Now we'll see here that the data, um, again, isn't defined. So this is kind of where we need to be doing like proper uh, like proper error checking and stuff like that. Cause, cause you can receive like null responses back from like the, the data that you're collecting and you've got to make sure you've got the appropriate guards. So 
um, if it's not loading and it was called and there wasn't an error and there's data, sorry, and data exists, that should. Data is still undefined, check possible null or undefined. So it's not loading and it was called. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, do, 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 if error. Hmm. This is the one challenge with TypeScript. It's like, how do I, how do I tell it that? No, 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 no. There is actually going to be something there. Just please use it. Um, and data. Uh, should exist. It's not loaded. Well. Okay, so like, realistically, that can be simplified to and data. Ah, uh, no, it's because create game might not exist. And data, and data dot create game, because you might not get a, a so you might get a successful response back, but the mutation might not have um, been successful. So you don't get any um, data in the uh, like the create uh, create game, which is like the the thing that I'm picking data out of. So there we go. Sweet. Fantastic. Now I could go through and refactor all of this, but there's some other cool things I want to show you that we can do with um, the, the GraphQL code gen. First up, let's go git add dash a, git commit uh, creating, oops, um, introing code gen from GraphQL files. Um, yeah, I, I might go and refactor that fully later, but yeah, there, like I said, there was other stuff that I wanted to show off that you can do with it. Um, cause you'll notice that I keep having to, um, like, like hit format whenever I do, you know, the, like this stuff, uh, like the, the generated files. So the, essentially the generated files are not going to pass my, um, code formatting. Uh, like if I was doing a, like a CI CD process that was running linting and stuff like that, my linting rules are not being applied to it. My formatting rules are not being applied to it, but thankfully we can do that quite easily with the, the code gen config file. Um, we'll come over to the docs because I'll just show you where that is uh, or more accurately, where to come to read it. Um, there's a section around prettiers and linters uh, and essentially what we do is we add a hooks and then get it to do uh, like whatever the hook is that we want to run afterwards. So we'll grab this hook here, paste it in. Uh, I'm just going to change it to n npx because I don't have prettier installed globally so I'll just get it to run npx prettier so it will run the version of prettier that's inside of the repository but if you wanted to run through like eslint you can do that uh, or if you had any other um, linting or formatting tools that you might want to run um, post generation yeah it's, it's quite easy to, to add that so that's done now when we run it let's come to npm run gen Okay, so we parse the output, generated, and there we go. So you, you'll notice that it did the auto format, uh, or like, you know, you might have noticed, it was a quick um, flick, that the auto format was done. So basically what it does, is it writes that file, and once that file is written, it then runs your, um, like your on, a, uh, on one file write um, hook. So you like do that after the, the fact. So you can, um, so yeah, like if you if you wanted to, to run like an, uh, an NPM, test like after it or, or whatever yeah, you could you could run all of that when the files are, are written to disk uh, but this one yeah it's just doing the formatting so now if i was to like hit save on that file it's not actually going to do anything it's not going to update uh, the format or any of that sort of stuff so yeah that's quite easy and uh, we go add we'll add if i can type add and commit adding formatting on file right wrote right to generated files and now let's get push dash u origin graphql types types there we go so let's push this up as a new branch uh, to the git repo because we've got some changes i'm going to create a new pull request yep um uh, generating graph ql types uh, 
automatically create that pull request and now um, what we'll see is uh, like another nifty feature of um, Azure Static Web Apps. You see it's immediately kicked off uh, a couple of GitHub actions. And one of those actions is going to do the build um, and stuff like that, but it's also going to deploy it to um, Azure Static Apps. Um, so what, it, what it's going to do behind the scenes is actually stand up a staging environment for these changes. And then I can then go onto that staging environment and interact with it and play with it and all that sort of stuff. Like the way that I would do with you know, any kind of other staging environment you might be working with, but it just sort of works without me having to um, or go and do my own manual deployment. And it's really good like, when people are contributing to a project, you can see what their changes are gonna look like and how they're uh, working and the impacts they might have without having to uh, like pull the code down yourself and you know, like set up your working environment to represent what these potentially incoming changes are going to be. Um, now we won't see anything particularly visual because we didn't do visual changes, we did backend changes, but you know, in theory, everything should work the same as it was working um, prior to doing the backend changes. So we'll give that a, a couple of moments. We'll, let's pop over to the actions and see what it's doing. Generating the types. So yeah, it's just kicked off this uh, build and deploy, which means that, ah, uh, it's, um, so I, I have actually checked in the generated files. Um, so I don't need to run uh, the generation while doing the build, but if you don't want generated files uh, included um, in that, then you would have to to modify uh, your like either your um, your npm build script to also call that npm gen uh, or npm run gen um, that I have, uh, or if uh, or modify the way that the workflow file works, that it will do that um, that generation as well. So yeah, it's just something to be mindful of. I, I completely didn't think about the fact that I was um, including the generator files in source control. Uh, yeah, but it's, like I said, it's, it's something worth being aware of that you would need to to make sure that you run that yourself if you're not you know, including those files. So, uh, build going, take a minute or two longer, hopefully, hopefully not too much longer. It's gonna take a while because I forgot that's gonna download the Azure Functions SDK because uh, I include that as a dependency. Um, so let's have a look. Any, uh, let's have a look. Is there anything else that we might want to add um, with uh, this? Or let's have a look at some of the other stuff um, that we can get with uh, plugins. So like I said, you can see there's a bunch of different languages um, that are supported um, that, uh, yeah, it, um, something that I'm not using um, in the way that I do the, the GraphQL is I just have like one big file, but if you wanted to have multiple files, go back to our config, um, I can put them in this same folder as the, uh, the document. So like maybe instead of calling that operations, I'd call that something else. Um, I, ooh, nice. I didn't realize that we would get um, IntelliSense around the, the YAML file. That's cool. Um, yeah, so block expression pulled in multiple code files, inline strings. I can even click out to a link here. And have a look at how the document works. Um, so a question from um, DOTA to Attitude. Um, no, I don't know anything about um, uh, Fargate on AWS. I, I haven't used um, AWS really um, uh, for, for much all, much other than like really like light touch experimentations. Uh, but yeah, uh, so I, sorry, I, I can't give you an answer better than, uh, I could probably Google it for you. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. It looks like, uh, yeah, let's focus on the, what I was talking about here. Um, so, it looks like we can specify multiple locations for where documents are. So uh, yeah, if you want to be explicit on the files, I could do that as like um, uh, sub nodes, or if I wanted to, you know, maybe pull out, um, I actually pull out the, the type. So 
the, the, the enum into a separate file. I could do that and then in the config reference, like a location where GraphQL types are relative to the operations that are can be performed and so on and so forth. But here we go. Um, let's go back here to our uh, build. So our build has completed, as I said, and you'll see a new comment has been pumped in there by GitHub Actions that says that your stage site is ready and we can click there pop across to it and here's a staging site. The The difference um, with this versus the deployed one is that it's got a, um, a suffix around the, I think the, the build that triggered it. Uh, let's have a look, what was the, what was the final commit? No, it's, uh, yeah, it's to do with the build ID. So it's it's on a separate um, subdomain. And then if we go to portal and uh, we'll jump into here and we'll have a look at um, what's actually been changed in the portal. Sign into all of the accounts. Cool. Well, thank you for the follow. Um, I'll be doing. I, I do some stuff with React. I do stuff with uh, a bunch of other languages. But yeah, like right now, I'm looking predominantly at how we do React with um, GraphQL, and then obviously uh, my deployment place is going to be to Azure uh, because that's uh, <laughs> that's where I work. Um, but yeah, the the stuff that I'm talking about here is not stuff that is overly tied to any particular platform. Uh, whoops, not custom domains, I want environments. Um, so because uh, I've generated something that has a, um, a staging environment or I've created a pull request, we can now come in here and we see environments, we have staging. Um, and that's this one here. Um, it's difficult to see, but down in the, um, the bottom corner, it's uh, saying that that's actually linking to the pull request. So I can control click to that. We'll jump straight through to the PR, so I can have a look back at that. Like, what triggered the creation of this staging environment? Um, that's the branch that it's attached to with inside of my Git repo. Um, when was the last build done? Um, and all that kind of thing. Uh, if I come into uh, like the, the the configuration, so let's say that um, what I was doing was introducing new config um, properties for the Azure Functions backend. Um, I can. I can get the environments uh, listed in here and I can actually add different um, config variables for different environments. Um, so, come on, that one's, there we go, it's finally loaded. So yeah, like there's uh, a separate environment. Um, I can have a look at that. Um, uh, okay, so yeah, you, you've run into stuff with Fygate and stuff breaking on, on pull requests, yeah. I, um, like staging environments and multiple staging environments um, with pretty much every platform I've ever worked with can be a real challenge, particularly if you want to try auto scaffold staging. Uh, but yeah, I, unfortunately, I can't speak to, to Fargate uh, as a as a approach to it. But yeah, I, that's kind of cool. But so it's all, it's all there. Um, now I could come into my pull request. I'm happy with this because I'm the only person that's working on it. So I hit merge. This will pop in. Um, I'll delete the branch as well. And that's going to trigger off um, the GitHub action for uh, the master branch. Oops, not pull requests, actions. Uh, so we've got the, um, the pull request being triggered. So this one here. And what's also going to happen differently this time is that it's going to do the build and deploy job, you know, just as we expect, because I've added some new files into the master and it's ultimately going to be um, dropped into the, the production site. So we're now updating production, but it's also gonna run this closed pull request job. Because obviously what we've done with the pull request is we've spun up a whole new environment. We wanna get rid of that. So we've got a separate action that will run on pull request closed that will then deprovision that environment. So it, like that's kind of a, a good thought about how you can do, if it's not with you know, static web apps like I'm using here, if you're using some other environment, uh, it's worthwhile looking at you know, if you can auto, auto spin up a new environment to deploy staging changes, how, automate the destruction of that environment as well uh, when the pull request is closed or like, whatever trigger the creation has completed because you don't want to leave resources just hanging around. It gets very expensive very quickly when you just forget to delete resources. Um, I know because I have done that plenty of times in the past and then got a bill at the end of the month and be like, ah, yeah, that's right. I was supposed to be able to, I was supposed to deploy, uh, destroy some environments. Oh, well, that was an expensive life lesson. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, but yeah, this is all orchestrated with GitHub Actions. It'll take a few minutes. 
because um, the, the the close pull request job won't run until the um, the the master job has completed as well. But yeah, I, I think we'll we'll wrap this uh, stream up today in a minute. Um, I just wanted to do a quick one to address a question that came up during last week's stream of how you do do um, uh, like better type. Um, safety of your GraphQL stuff, and I think we, yeah, we saw that in action. We saw that in action because I actually had properly broken things. Um, I, I, I really like the um, having the operations in files that are like clearly reusable, uh, and then being able to generate the hooks from those um, operations. But um, if you're if you're someone that would prefer the operations are co-located. Um, where they're used, like so, each operation represents like a, a, a single use case of how you would call that, whether it's a mutation or a query, um, or or even a subscription. Then um, check out the the stuff that Think Mill is doing with the um, TS dash uh, uh, GQL um, package because it might suit your programmatic model better. Uh, but yeah, and that's it's just all it's all stuff to look at, all stuff to consider in what's going to make it easiest and best for you in uh, generating out the, the TypeScript definitions for your code. Or uh, if you're using GraphQL code gen, um, your, your Java code or Flow or um, .NET and C Sharp, whatever is the, the target platform that you're working with. Um, yeah, it's, I think it's kind of cool. Uh, it's nearly done. I just want to see, uh, I've actually never done a pull request to my own repository that's using static web apps, so I'm kind of interested to see uh, the output of that closed pull request job. That's kind of why I'm just like stalling for time, waiting for it to, to get there, watch it run. Yep, because uh, that one's just about finished. We'll see that green tick in a minute. Um, and come on. A watch build never completes. <laughs> I'm my own funniest person. Come on, like you, it's so close. You've uploaded all the files. Just accept that you need to run uh, the next job. Just accept it. So close. Uh, oh, wait, that's, um, that one's hanging, which means that it's pretty much done there. There we go. Thanks, exiting, come on, hurry up and exit. Uh, tedious, tedious, there we go. That one's finally done. I'm gonna say that it was just slow uh, hitting the, the log output. And, oh wait, no, it's not that action. <laughs> uh, it wasn't even that one that was gonna be running because it was on the, <laughs> it was this one. <laughs> uh, so you said so with this action, um, it didn't run the build and deploy job because if we jump over, if we jump back to a GitHub Actions file, I'm going to um, uh, YAML, what's it called? That one there. Um, <laughs> so build and deploy job uh, wasn't run because while the event was pushed and it was, uh, so, so while the event name was pull request, and uh, it was a closed action, so that one skips over. And then it's this one down here because the event name was pull request and the action was closed. Sat there watching the wrong thing, uh, of course. Uh, so closed pull request, um, yeah, you'll see that it's doing uh, a bunch of stuff. Um, we don't see a whole lot of output because it's, like, it's just doing um, calls into Azure. And now if we come to environments, we'll see that we have no staging environment left. Ta-da! Done. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Um, if there's uh, anything that you want to see on future streams, um, drop me a message, uh, something like a, a Twitter DM or, or something like that, um, and see how we can we can tackle that. Uh, I probably won't be streaming next Friday. Uh, I've got a conference that I'm presenting at in the afternoon of next Friday, so I'll be. Uh, uh, attending that, but uh, I try and keep a fairly regular cadence of, um, of every Friday around about lunchtime. Uh, but yeah, till next time, thanks for joining in and we'll see you uh, for another stream.